In the years since NASA's New Horizons spacecraft flew by Pluto, the dwarf planet has maintained its icy heart. But closer analysis of the trove of data collected by the Space Grove reveals intriguing clues to other possible features, including whether Pluto has a sloshing underground ocean of liquid water, and the data has confirmed some ideas like how Pluto and its moons formed. Scientists have been sifting through the information that has been sent back intermittently since the flyby on July 14, 2014. It almost simultaneously seems like forever, and it seems like no time at all, said S. Alan Stern, the mission's principal investigator of the months that have elapsed since the flyby. We've been super busy the whole time. Within the days of the flyby, data from the New Horizons unveiled Pluto's diverse terrain and surroundings. It was not a bland snowball, but a world covered with strikingly complex icecapes, from plains to soaring mountains. The scientists described signs of active tectonics, a thin but hazy atmosphere, and other perplexing features. It's much more complex than people, ourselves as experts included. Expected, Dr. Stern said. It rivals Mars. For the most part, the first impressions have held up. Dr. Stern cited 40 scientific papers, hundreds of hours of teleconferences among the scientists, and 200 scientific talks. We've added a lot of detail, he said. The story of Pluto is still largely a story of ice. On Earth, the only ice is frozen water. On Pluto, nitrogen, methane, and carbon dioxide also freeze a solid. The most striking feature that NASA's New Horizons spacecraft saw when it flew past Pluto last July was a heart-shaped region now named Tumbo Region, after Clyde Tumbo, the discoverer of Pluto. The left half is covered by mostly nitrogen snow, the right side is more methane ice. Pluto had an ocean of liquid water, and it still might. One of the new ideas that has emerged in recent months is that oceans of liquid water existed under the icy crusts of both Pluto and its largest moon, Charon. Pluto's ocean may still exist. The photographs of Pluto's surface show tectonic evidence of the crust stretching and breaking apart, indicating the slow freezing of a subsurface water ocean, which would cause the crust to expand because ice is less dense than water. But if the ocean had frozen entirely, computer models indicate that further cooling should have quickly transformed the ice from the structure seen in ice cubes on Earth, known as Ice-1, to a variety known as Ice-2, which is 30% denser. If that had occurred, Pluto would have shrunk, and cracks should have appeared in a different pattern with wrinkles and folds pushed upward as pieces of the crust were compressed. Such cracks have been seen on Mercury, Earth's moon, and Mars, but not on Pluto. Ice too hasn't formed and therefore the ocean hasn't completely frozen, said Noah Hammond, a graduate student at Brown University who was the lead author of a paper published in Geophysical Research Letters. New Horizons flew by the Kuiper Belt object named Arakoth, the most distant world ever visited by a spacecraft. It lies 4.1 billion miles from Earth, or equivalent to 44 astronomical units or 6.6 .6 billion kilometers. Now, the spacecraft has returned enough data to Earth for scientists to fully access what they saw, and they're concluding that our current data of how planetesimals form is due for an update. New Horizons reached Arakoth on January 1, 2019, flying by at 14.43 kilometers per second, or 30,000 miles per hour, just 3,500 kilometers from its surface. Arakoth, originally nicknamed Ultima Thule by mission scientists and technically known as 2014 MU69, turned out to be shaped like a giant peanut. A narrow neck joins two lobes, one slightly larger than the other. Mission scientists didn't have a special reason to aim for this object. It was simply at the right location and distance from Pluto to attempt a flyby. But they could not have chosen a better target. New Horizons' proximity enabled the probe to map Arakoth's surface with a resolution of 
30 meters per pixel. The detail revealed a smooth surface, relatively unmarred by craters. In other words, the surface lacks signs of a violent collision field past. The observations also confirm that Arakoth's surface is a deep red. The way the human eye will perceive it is as a very dark brown, said New Horizons co-investigator Will Grundy from Lowell Observatory during a press conference. The researchers detected methanol ice on the surface as well as other complex organic species that the scientists were unable to identify. Combining the images of Arakoth with dynamical studies of the Kuiper Belt, the astronomers conclude that Arakoth formed 4.5 billion years ago. It's a relic from the early days of the solar system that came together in the outer fringes of the solar nebula. And because of its remote location, it has remained pristine and untouched for most of the solar system's history. Researchers have classified Arakoth as a contact binary. A new analysis shows it is the product of a gentle collision between two pre-existing bodies. It must have been a delicate dance in which the two objects orbited each other until they came to rest onto each other. They are just touching each other. It's like they are kissing. Or if they were a spacecraft, they would be docking, said New Horizons co-investigator William McKinnon from Washington University in St. Louis. There is no evidence that the merger of these two lobes was at all violent. The main axis of Arakoth's two lobes are aligned to within 5 degrees, further supporting the idea of a slow approach under their mutual gravitational influence. To test this peaceful scenario of Arakoth's origin, a group of scientists led by McKinnon ran a series of computer simulations to test various speeds of impact. They concluded that the impact must have occurred slower than 3 meters per second. Probably less than 1 meter a second and obliquely, otherwise you cannot explain what we see at Arakoth, McKinnon said. Double Worlds Binary or contact binary objects seem to be fairly abundant in the Kuiper Belt, according to recent ground-based telescopic surveys. The Kuiper Belt is essentially the debris left over from planet formation. So if Arakoth came together gently, its example could potentially shift the way scientists think about planet formation in general. There are two dominant theories for how planetesimals form. The classic hierarchical model posits that a series of collisions gradually grow larger and larger objects, from bits of dust to pebbles to planetesimals and so on. The main caveat is that this theory has difficulty explaining why the impacting bodies would stick together after colliding rather than ricocheting off each other. The alternative and more recently proposed scenario is known as gravitational instability. In this picture, when clouds of small particles within the protoplanetary disk become dense enough, they collapse under their own gravity. A phenomenon called streaming instability is behind this collapse. Gas in the disk drags on solid particles so they end up organizing into streams or strings of pebble-sized particles. Like a line of cyclists riding against the wind, the first pebbles in line receive most of the headwind. The rest of the pebbles drop behind the first ones in order to reduce drag. These pebble strings ultimately collapse directly into objects, tens to hundreds of kilometers in diameter in scales of 1,000 years or less. In other words, massive collapse occurs in the blink of an astronomical eye. During the press conference, the researchers clarified that the hierarchical model probably still applies later on during the planet-building process, when larger bodies crash into each other and their gravitational pull is strong enough for them to stick together. This is a decisive result in favor of one theory, local cloud collapse, said New Horizons principal investigator Alan Stern from Southwest Research Institute. I believe this is a game changer.